What's good, friends? Ebony Chappelle checking in here with a little more positivity for your podcast listening and viewing pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of What's Good with Ebony Chappelle. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe, rate and review, follow, whatever it is um, that you do to show a little love for the podcast. Thank you to everyone for supporting so far. It feels good. Um, and I just want to let you guys know that I definitely appreciate that support. Um, you can connect with me on social media at Ebony the Writer on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also connect with me on my website, ebonychappelle.com. Today, um, well, before we jump into everything, I almost jumped ahead. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about what's been good with me. And what's been good with me right now is spending time in nature. So for those of you that don't know, I am a part of a team of folks called the Friends of Belmont Beach, and we are helping to build a pop-up park in Hawville, which is the neighborhood that I grew up in on the west side of Indianapolis. So we are helping to build that pop-up park, and it has just been a really incredible process. It's a labor of love, absolutely. Um, but love nonetheless. So it's just been a very, very lovely process so far. And in building it, we've been outside, we've been moving around tree limbs, and, excuse me, building uh, building fire um, pits and just doing all kind of stuff to bring the park back together. And it's very, you know, labor intensive and you're outdoors and some days it's really cold, but it's something that's so invigorating about being out there. It's something that's so invigorating about putting, you know, my hands and my body in nature that has just been such a blessing so far. So um, that is, is what's been good with me. And I really appreciate the experience. And I want to encourage you all, if you have an opportunity to get outside um, throughout the day, I know that since COVID is starting to transform as far as our experience with it. Offices are starting to open up. People are starting to fall back into some of those same routines. There's a lot of people that are stuck in front of computers and things all day, stuck at desk. And sometimes that's necessary. That's just the way that life is set up. But as much as you can, as much as is possible, um, getting out in nature, I think, can just have an incredible, incredible um, benefit to you and your your mental health, your physical wellness, being able to see the world as something broader and bigger than the task that sit on our to-do list every day. So I know I sound preachy <laughs> a little bit, but I just, I just want to share that with you guys. So get out in nature, enjoy some sunshine, enjoy some wind in your face, um, some earth beneath your feet. Now I'm starting to sound real hippie-ish, but yeah, get outside and enjoy those things. It's really good for you. So today our um, Pay Black Women Spotlight is going out to Create Connect Collab. For those of you that don't know, Create Connect Collab is an organization that helps to boost and support women business owners, women uh, content creators and influencers and things like that um, through a series of different things. So there are often master classes where we have workshops um, where people come in and teach you different skills, whether it's marketing, it's how to get your finances in order as a business, um, taking care of the legal side of what you have going on, all types of master classes. We also have mastermind groups as a part of create, excuse me, <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words, but as part of Create Connect Collab, um, really, really cool stuff going on there. And the women behind it are Lativa and Starla. So these two women are just powerhouses. Starla actually started what became Create Connect Collab many, many years ago at her kitchen table, her and her husband, Reggie. Um, and it was just a group of us that all graduated from Ball State University. We came in and we did this master, this mastermind group together where we would share our plans for the future, things that we wanted to accomplish. And we just helped 
support each other, um, help brainstorm with one another, give each other ideas around strategy. And it was my first time being a part of something like that. And it really helped to set the tone for some of the choices that I made moving forward. You know, there's this meme that floats around i don't even know if the quote is can really be attributed to will smith but oftentimes it's attributed to him and it says that you know if you want to see how successful you're going to be look at the five people that are around you and that'll you know let you know how far you're going to go and whether or not that's a real quote is kind of beside the point i think the essence of it is extremely important which is if you want to go far surrounding yourself with people that want that same thing for you for you but also want it for themselves as well so you're able to pull your resources and put your head together it's something you can't do with everybody you know you you need to be a little judicious and and thoughtful about the type of environments you put yourself in and a lot of that is really trial and error so you know don't beat yourself up about anything you know we all make mistakes and learn from them as well hopefully so um just being able to take that time and be around people that pour into you and help uplift you in that way is extremely important and that's what create connects collab has done for me and so many other people so i will drop some information in the show notes so you can learn how to support them um, maybe come out to some of these meetups to the conference that's happening the conferences are always off the chain the annual conference so do not want to miss details on that um, but again shout out to lativa and star of create connects collab all right so on today's show we are talking with um raymond and nick of balance period i first met these guys at an event that was put on um by murdoch uh anthony murdoch or online known as murdoch um at butler and it was just amazing being able to learn techniques and tips on how to take care of our mental wellness from two young black men. Um, that's not something that I've seen as often, although there is a really, really old reference um, on the show Sanford and Son. So I'm gonna take y'all back a little bit. So there's this show called Sanford and Son that starred Red Fox. Some of y'all listening know all about Sanford and Son, but I can't take for granted that some people may not know that this wonderful show existed. So I love watching reruns of Sanford and Son among other older shows. So I was watching an episode one day and um, Lamont, who plays um, the son in this scenario, that character, he and his dad, played by Red Fox, uh, Fred Sanford was his name on the show. They were really, really getting into it really bad. Like they were all, they always argue on the show. It's just kind of like a thing. But in this particular episode, they were going through it so bad that Lamont thought that he hated his father. I think he might have actually said, I hate you at some point. I can't remember. But long story short, someone suggests that they go to therapy. So the two of them go to therapy and their therapist was a black man. And this was on TV in the 70s. So I had never seen that episode until recently. And it just really, really blew me away. And I thought, wow, this is such an amazing example. And I wish that that would have just kept going more often. You know, I thought about what if this was pushed so heavily to where back in the 70s, black men going to therapy would have been normalized even more. Like, I think they did their part on that show, at least in that episode, um, to promote that. But I just think, you know, what if that would have been like a consistent thing? Anywho, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here. Nick and Ray, they're not therapists, but they are two people that work in the mental health space and help to give folks systems and um, strategies on how to really become more self-aware and take their mental wellness into their own hands and, and make it a priority in their lives. So um, was really impressed by them, started listening to their podcast. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm a podcast stand. So 
like I'm it, it seemed like every episode I'm talking about a different podcast I love but anywho um sorry listening to that they had great information and I thought it would be really cool to bring them on and have a conversation around how they got their platform started and what their thoughts are about um, being black men working in this space. So without further ado, let's jump into that conversation with Nick and Ray of Balance Period. So starting out, um, I like to ask people because the name of the show is What's Good? And I like to ask people what's good with them and that can be you know any way that you take it so ray i'll start with you what's been good with you yeah well personally i am very passionate about personal development and what's been good for me here recently has been prioritizing more time for my mental and emotional well-being by going to therapy so i've been seeing a therapist now for like the last month or so and it's just and is this your first time going through therapy Okay, yep, wow. It's been my first experience. So mm-hmm. it's been just, it's it's refreshing. I think that's the best way to describe it. Just having someone be able to observe what I've been experiencing internally um, and just to give me some objective feedback on it in ways that I can better manage my mental and emotional wellness. And so, uh, you know, from that being uh, my experience, I've just overall, I just feel good. And I'm a firm believer that my inner world creates my outer world. So the fact that I am investing more of my energy into, you know, caring for myself internally, I definitely have been experiencing the benefits of that externally. So I'm just, I'm I'm feeling good. Yeah, that's what's good with me. That is awesome. That's awesome. Nick, what about you? What's good with you? Hmm. So it's been, it's been interesting. I have been working, I work on my own like cultivation stuff. So I teach mindfulness and breath work through about two, through balance period. And within that, I pretty much take the things that I work on for myself and try to figure out a way to simplify it as much as I can to share it with others. And so I've been doing a lot more of applying what I teach to my own life from various perspectives. And that's been really interesting. And one thing that I've noticed from it is that it's put me in a place of allowance a lot more to where I'm able to allow others to be who they are within their own lives. I'm a big, I'm a firm believer that as long as you don't infringe upon anyone's free will, do whatever it is that you're going to do. So me being able to look at the world from that way and allow other people to live their life how they would has given me just an amazing experience to have. Mm, Awesome. Awesome. So I want to jump into, um, balance period. So I first found out about you guys. I went to an event hosted by, uh, Murdoch at Butler University here in the city we live in. And I was immediately just enamored with the fact that there's two black men leading us through this breathing exercise and teaching us about how to take care of our mental health. So I wanted to know more right then, um, just because unfortunately that's something that is rare. Well, I'm not gonna say that it's rare. It's not as publicized. Um, as much as it probably should be people like you in those types of spaces. So tell the people a little bit about how you started this platform balance period. Yeah. And so the brand and the platform itself was birthed as a podcast. And so it started back in March of 2018 and it was a podcast that I created then to share my story of growth that I experienced year over year from just making some tiny tweaks to how I spent my time and energy, starting with what I believed about myself. And then it trickled to the habits that I chose to practice. And so I, I realized that there was just, there were small things that I did. And I'm like, wow, if I can feel, you know, this good, like I want to be able to share this with other people to know that, hey, all that's necessary in order for you to improve your quality of life is just making some tiny tweaks and adjustments. And so that's how it started. And, and over time, you know, it originally was like a, a portion of my personal training business because at that time I was a full time personal trainer. And so um, it wasn't up until the pandemic hit that, you know, we I decided to bring Nick on and we just we did a pivot and we started to say, well, hey, we're now experiencing something that is out of all of our control. And we know that we have been equipping ourselves over the, you know, the two years prior with tools and, and knowledge that was helping us manage our lifestyle in the midst of that pandemic. So I was like, we, we need to create something that we can use to serve other people, right? And to show them that they too can experience peace in the midst of all of this uncertainty. 
so we created a coaching program that is now the backbone of the business and um and the rest is kind of history so yeah mm -hmm. it started out though as just a podcast yeah yeah so nick tell me about um how you felt when ray called you and said okay i want you to come on and be a part of this business with me and then start going into what it is that you guys do now with um, training people one on one to or in groups also to, to help balance out their mental health. Yeah. So it was actually something that I had wanted to do for a while. Mm -hmm. I had never and what voiced were you doing it before. So uh, at that time, I was managing a supplement shop. So I was okay. just working just a regular job. And uh, it was something I had wanted to do before. But. Yeah, I never voiced it. I never like told him like, hey, I would like to work with you or this or that. I just kind of like had it in my head. It was like, you know, <laughs> it would be really cool to work together. And so mm -hmm. in my own journey, I had got into like breath work and mindfulness and really deep into meditation. And he saw me start to post about that and talk about that a lot. And so he felt that it could be a good fit. So when he asked me, I was like, man, you know, when you just let things take place, like let things happen, they they happen. So I just got excited and ran with it. Yeah, that's fabulous. So I want to talk a little bit about um, what you all understood about mental wellness prior to getting into this work? Did you have any understanding about it? Was it something that was practiced in your home? Like, what was your exposure to that? Yeah, the exposure that I had was definitely rooted in like religion. And so it was more so mm -hmm. just always any circle specific back to religion. Like, so uh, we grew up non-denominational Christian. And so okay. it was, yeah, it was pretty much just like, you know, give it to God. God got you. Um, mm -hmm. And like, if there is worry, like God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. You know, those are kind of the the rebuttals to internal, you know, obstacles and, and stress that, that I would experience. And so for me, there wasn't any like anything directly connected to what we do that was taught to us other than, you know, just having faith that things will get better at some point. Right. So. Um, that was, I know, from my experience, the the extent that I was exposed to mental health um, growing up. And Nick, I imagine the same for you. But what was it? Because you said that when you were managing the supplement shop, um, even then, this was something that you kind of wanted to get into. So what what was it that caused that spark? So mine more so was, I mean, of course, you know, like you said, we grew up the same it was life, just life itself. Like I grew up playing basketball my whole entire life. Like I was a basketball player. That was my identity and everything. And so once that was over, I was just completely lost. And I had tried so many different things. And when I realized like nothing was fulfilling me, nothing was making me feel whole, nothing made me feel purposeful. Didn't matter how much money I made, didn't matter who was excited for me. I just felt empty. And then I had my first uh, experience with doing a meditation. It was like, whoa, there's an entire universe inside of myself that I have never explored before. And that kind of sparked mm. it for me. Wow. You know, I definitely have to um, echo your thoughts about meditation because meditation is something that I've brought back into my life recently, especially during the pandemic. Because like you said, Ray, we were in this time where everything was so uncertain. We're still really in that right now, even though it mm -hmm. feels like um, it's over. We know that there are still some things that we have to get through. Um, but meditation was a game changer. Just taking those few minutes a day just to either be quiet or practice guided meditation. It has been it's been life changing. Have you had any um, really extreme moments in meditation that you, got, that you can share, like something that just kind of like changed your life? Um, yeah, so. Uh, let's see. I've had two. So I've had one where yeah. I've I meditated like just completely sober, perfectly fine. I had another one where I meditated on uh, acid, and that was like a completely different experience. Oh, like they were shit. both like, okay. yeah. So they were like, I, I'm a very I'm when it comes down to this aspect of life, I'm very big on experimenting with myself, okay. and I just dive into stuff head first. But All so right. for the sober experience, I noticed I had this moment where I noticed that everything slowed down. I never noticed how fast my mind moved on a consistent basis. And when I would go within, I realized like, hey, it feels like I've been in here for five hours and I open my eyes and it's been 20 minutes. But that's because mm. my brain was just so used to going 50,000 miles an hour all the time that it was like, oh, something's wrong. We've been here for too long. We're missing out on doing all this stuff. When it's reality, mm. it's like, no, like we can slow down. Like we can take the time to just be where we are for a moment. Then on the other one, it was just the 
situation of me feeling like I was dying. Like I, I was 100% sure I was going to die. Like I wasn't going to be on this earth anymore. And I just had mm. like this moment of just complete acceptance that it that I was still going to be conscious. And that just kind of like changed my whole relationship with just life in and of itself and how I look at it. And so that was wow. like my two big profound moments in that state. Mm. Really quickly, do you feel like, would you consider that experience ego death than what happened when you were on asset? So before, if you would have asked me, I would have said yes. Okay. With where I'm at now, I would say more so of assimilation, understanding that there is no separation between what we would call ego and what we are ourselves. That it's only a thought that's in between. Mm. Okay, you getting deep. You getting into that. This feels like Eckhart. This feels like Eckhart's whole a little bit. Um, yeah. So Ray, what about you? Have you had any of those kind of breakthrough moments throughout your process of um, you know bettering your mental wellness? Yeah, and so not as you know, not as extreme. I would say as next okay. experience with you know almost dying. I think the biggest thing for me was the moment in meditation that I realized that I was not my thoughts. Like for so long, mm. I identified with the thoughts that were going on in my mind. And it wasn't until I was consistently practicing mindfulness that I would sit down and I like realized like, oh, I am the observer of my thoughts. And then I learned I'm the observer of these emotions that I'm experiencing. And that yeah. just changed my whole life experience because now I could respond differently to them in the moment which would allow me to get different experiences from the same things that I may have felt prior to, you know, to that point. So for me, just that level of expanded awareness from just sitting still, paying attention to what was happening internally, just really opened my eyes for me to understand and truly feel right. That I am not what I feel and I am not the thoughts that cross my mind. So that for me yes. was definitely the most transformational piece. Yeah. That is a huge game changer because as a person that often lives in her head um, my mom actually gifted me the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Mm. And I've been reading it for maybe like two or three years. It's been a while because <laughs> I just, I digest a little bit at a time, right? But I was actually explaining that concept the other day to someone of becoming an observer of your thoughts. And the way that I thought about it was um, because we had recently played a video game and I'm not a video game person at all. Like we were at an arcade and we played this game. And I was like, it's like being across the street, you know, and then you see like people walking up, up and down the street. And I was like, imagine those are your thoughts. And she's like, oh, there's a person walking down the street. Like you don't necessarily mm -hmm. like latch on to it or yeah. uh, say, oh, I am like, no, it's just it's just a thought. It's just and just let it go by. And that has been so liberating um, for mess for myself personally to really relinquish that feeling of having to identify with my thoughts because mm -hmm. our thought processes can be all over the place. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, big time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, this is gonna, this could potentially be kind of a funny question. Um, but what are some of the pros and cons of working in this field of mental wellness? I know as a person that has been working on that, um, just on myself personally, not trying to, you know, help other people. Um, well, not not in that way, because I do help other people. But, you know, like mm -hmm. being hired by them to do that sort of work. Um, sometimes I feel like you could come off too positive or too like in the sky for people, um, those are some of the reactions that can happen kind of on the con end. But I'm just curious, what are some of your your personal experiences with that? Um, you want to go, go ahead, ahead Ray? No, okay. go ahead. So I'll say, I'll say Ray is really good at explaining what I'm going to say because it's something we talked about before. So okay. I would say the pro is that we know every single human being can benefit from this. That's the mm -hmm. pro. Like that, We know that every single person can. The con is that people lack the awareness and the accountability to want to take this on to make those changes. Mm. Or it's not something that they notice. It's not something that's like, we know it. We know the things that we need to do to change our lives. But are we willing to do them right now and get out of our comfort zone or what we've created for ourselves already? And so mm -hmm. that's like something that we do talk about like because it's, it's an obstacle for us. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, For Ray? sure. Yeah, for sure. And I think in addition to that, the you know in addition to the people not necessarily 
like feeling like getting a little bit uncomfortable so that they can grow. Um, that's actually just a natural part of the growth process is a little uncomfortability. Um, but I feel like in our society, it's been something that's just been swept under the rug, especially for people that look like us, right? In the black community, it mm-hmm. because it wasn't addressed, like there's so much stigma, you know, it's like layers upon layers of stigma on top of talking about what's happening in your inner world. Some people don't even acknowledge that we have an inner world. And so I think that is one of the cons, but I, I, I see that we have turned that into a pro because our approach has simplified the process so much that we can have a conversation with someone that can spark right a, a level of awareness within them and say, hey, I can make these adjustments and changes and never even mention the term mental health. So mm. I, we have been able to, to really simplify it and turn it into something a lot more palatable for even people that may just they may see mental health as something that is stigmatized because it is, but we're, we're, we're able to deliver it in a lot, um, in a lot more simplified way for people. So we've definitely kind of flipped that con on his head and turned it into a pro. Love that. And I want to come to that in a few, I want to come back to that in a few. Mm-hmm. Um, but another question I have is how does this impact your personal relationships? Like in terms of dating and stuff like that? Because I know for me, once I started working on myself and started going to therapy and stuff like that, it made certain parts of that very, very lit. And then it made other things like way more challenging because I felt like I was more aware of stuff that I maybe didn't pay attention to before I started that process. So I'm just curious to know from you all's perspective, what is that like? How do you navigate that? Um, I would say for me, I'm just going to make it simple. Um, the more that I accepted and began to love myself, the easier it was for me to accept and love my partner. It mm-hmm. made it to where the things that they did no longer affected me because one, they have absolutely nothing to do with me. And two, this is them on their journey that I'm making the conscious choice to be here. So I took accountability for the space that I put myself in. And that just pretty much allowed me to experience what I do now. We're actually getting married in September. So it's just put me in a position to where I can allow them to be whatever it is they are. I get to be who I am and we just grow together. That's beautiful and so mature, such a mature approach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm still working through that. I'm still working through that. And I know for me, it was difficult to separate what I did for a living and my relationship because my mind would be mm. turned on to the coach side of what I do to where when I would have conversations with my significant other you know, she'll say something and naturally my mind goes, so let me solve this problem. There is no problem. Right. But in my oh, mind, that's what yeah. it was telling me. So I've gone through the process of identifying that um, I'm working. I've worked through that with my therapist. That's why I'm grateful for her. Uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, I've gone through the process to do that. And, and now my girlfriend and I are actually in the process of going to therapy together. And so, you know, just wow. taking what I use for myself um, and creating space for both of us to do that, you know, as a unit. Because I've recognized it's valuable for me. I'm like, it, it's up to me to take responsibility and accountability for us growing together if that's what I want to see change in my relationship. So similar to what Nick was saying, uh, accepting, you know, accepting the other person through accepting myself first um, helps. But then it's, you know, on, on my end, I see me um, being the person that's, you know, because of my level of awareness, it's up to me to create the systems in my relationship that will help us continue to grow over time. So. That's kind of how I've been approaching it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, one thing that I see um, as a benefit of the work that you both are doing is that it has um, it has the potential to impact generations of people down the line. And I just think that is so powerful for um, our community as a whole, but just, you know, as the human collective community as a whole, um, what it looks like when we do our own work and how that positively impacts the people around us. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So um, going back to how this works. So I know that we have the Balance Period podcast, which I am a fan of, really appreciate um, those, those notes and those um, gifts that you all give us in terms of like how to, I love, uh, I think it was one I listened to about how to, um, work with your morning routine and whatnot. That was one I listened to recently. Definitely appreciated that. Um, So how does it work when someone comes to work with you all on the coaching aspect? What's that process like? 
Yeah. So the process starts with us just learning more about what they feel like they need, whether it's an individual or whether it's a team. We just want to gain a deeper understanding of like what it is that you want. Um, and then we can, you know, we come up with a plan of action that works best for you with where you are. That's one thing that we've learned. Like everyone is so unique. We're all on different, you know, parts of our journey. And so we like to meet people where they are by starting our relationship out by just learning a little bit more about, you know, a little bit about where they are from their perspective and then where they want to go. And then we kind of help them find the balance between the two so that they're able to recognize the full worth of the experience that they're having now as they are traveling right through their journey of making it to where it is that they want to be. Awesome. So what kind of, um, impact does it have on on the person afterwards like what is the intended outcome of going through this process yeah so the intention behind it is to create a system of operation for the individual that prompts them to consistently expand their level of self-awareness so we firmly believe that self-awareness is the prerequisite for self-care so if we're on this journey of living our best life and making sure that we're prioritizing our wellness, it takes us understanding from the inside out who we are and where we are so that we can give ourselves what we need when we need it. And so a lot of our focus is, hey, by the end of this experience, you are going to know more about yourself than you ever have before. And you're going to be set up with the tools and resources that you need to continue to expand your awareness and do so in a way where you're still kind to yourself where you're patient with yourself, where you are expressing the love for yourself by taking what you learn through expanding your awareness and implementing that into your routine so that you can care for yourself um, in a tangible way. And so the biggest thing is, is a, an expansion of awareness so that they're able to take action on incrementally improving their quality of life over time. Mm, yeah, that self-awareness piece is very, very powerful because it's just like anything else. You know, you can't fix something if you're not aware of, you know, the things that need to be fixed. Not that people need to be fixed, but you guys, you guys feel what I'm saying. For sure. So, for sure. so Nick, where does the the breath play in here? Uh, I just read a book recently by James Nestor. I think it was just called Breath. Yep. Um, y'all were checking his. Y'all read it too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah. Mind blowing. <laughs> Mind blowing in terms of like how our breath just can change our whole physiology and mental health, mm -hmm. nervous system, all of that. So tell us how you all implement that throughout this process with the people you work with. So one of the very simple things, first things that we give them is something called mindful moment reminders. And all that is, is just to set reminders in your phone that go off, that just vibrate, that remind you to pause and just observe a deep breath. A lot of times we are so unaware of our breathing, even though that's one of the very few things that we get control of within our lives. And mm. so we just want to bring awareness to our breath. I know one of the things I've talked about before is that when you're happy, you're breathing a certain way. When you're sad, you're breathing a certain way. When you're afraid, like all these emotions and things that we deal with, we're breathing a certain way. So if you could control mm. your breath in the midst of those emotions, you could control who you are in those situations. And that's where we try to help people get their mental to through teaching them small different breathwork techniques, mindful moment reminders and different things like that. Awesome. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. Um, but take us through a very like mini version of what that mindfulness uh, moment would look like. Yeah. So we'll do a uh, very simple. You can do this breathing technique all day, every day, anytime. It's just for for anything. It's yeah. called balanced breathing. We're going to breathe in for six seconds and out for six seconds. And we'll just do three rounds of it and I'll count us through. Should we close our eyes? You don't have to. So you don't okay. have to close your eyes. You can keep them open. It's all good. I'll count us down and we'll get started. Three, two, one. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. And exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five six and exhale one two three four five six one last time inhale one two three 
four, five, six, and exhale. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And the cool thing is, is that that is less than a minute. So mm -hmm. taking less than a minute out of our day to do that, it gives us the opportunity to recenter ourselves in that moment. And that's just, I mean, it's an amazing feeling. Absolutely. I feel like a whole new person already <laughs> just doing that. And you know what? I love whoever's um, fur baby was barking in the background. That was mine. I, so you, you noticed yes. it. <laughs> I noticed it, but I love it because it's very realistic because like you said, we can do this any time of day, all throughout the day. So no matter what's going on, you could be at work and people talking in the background or you're driving down the street, but it's like just taking that moment in the midst of everything. Because even though I heard it, it didn't disrupt what I had going on because nice. I was really focusing on my breath. So I love that. Love that. Love awesome. that. Love that. Yeah. Um, and quick reminder to those of you that are listening, that's in through the nose, out through the mouth. So yes. really important for your breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, mental wellness for black men specifically. Um, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm talking to two black men. You already know that you can see them. Those of you that are listening, you can't see them. So I'm going to let you know that. Um, but, you know, I, I said earlier that when I saw y'all at the event that Murdoch put on, that was the thing that initially drew me in just the visual of that. Um it's a shame that that is not promoted more widely. Um, but I just want to get your thoughts on it, like the importance and the significance of Black men being in this space and um, taking up space, doing this kind of work and just, you know, going after that for themselves on an individual level. Mm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, similar to what we were talking about before, with some of the cons behind working in the space is that it's just so much stigma behind it. Um, I think that that has influenced the reason why, you know, there is this separation between what you normally associate with black men and then them caring for their mental health. Um, we've been taught that, you know, we got to stay strong. And that's also another thing, like we've been taught based on, you know, a long time ago when we were slaves to, you know, to you know shut up and take it and we just be grateful for what we get right so that mm -hmm. kind of shaped our you know mental health journey as black men and then over time it's just been reinforced within our own community that is not something that we talk about and it's not something you know we don't we don't really we don't express our emotions other than like aggression and anger right and so mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. that that's just the case and it just takes more men being able and being willing to you know, explore something new, try something new. Um, and I would say, think about it similar to what you were mentioning before, Ebony, like what we're doing is impacting in a positive way, generations of our family. So if you think about it in a more like long, like long term sense to say, hey, I can do something now that's different than what I've ever experienced before that can translate over to generations worth of wellness right in my family mm. for you know for years and years to come and so yeah. i think that if if we start to think about it like that as black men um just trying something new then we'll be able to just explore it a little bit more and to see the benefit of it and, I, and when i talk about anger and aggression i think that's the biggest thing right i was mentioning before the biggest thing i learned is that i'm not my thoughts and i'm not my emotions so in those moments when we are angry um and we experience anger we don't have to take it out on, you know, another one of our brothers by killing them in the street. We can, mm -hmm. you know, pause or and take it out on our families. On our, at home. Yeah, on our families yeah. or on ourselves, you know, ourselves. So yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be able to make different decisions. And I think based on those different decisions, we'll see a shift in, you know, the narrative of what it means to be a black man in America from what we can control. Right. We can't necessarily change everything about the systems that are in place. But what we can control is how we care for ourselves and what it is that we do with our two hands and with the energy that we have on a daily basis. So that's kind of my thought process on it. Mm, yeah, yeah. Nick, um, as you jump in on this, Ray said something about, um, and I'm going to misquote this, but the, the essence that I gathered from um, part of what you shared was having the, the space to be able to do that and explore that. What does it take? What what can we be doing to make sure that 
black men feel safe enough um, and feel like they have the, the space and the opportunity to explore things like this? I would say to create the space, it comes up to the individual. And that's okay. that's a little bit one of the hard parts. So the way I like to look at it is for me coming into this space, I focus on being the change that I want to see in the world. And what I've noticed is that having confidence in that trickles on to other people. I know one thing Raymond says that a lot of times at the end of our podcast is you can't fill no anyone else's cup unless your cup is already full. And so by being that example of filling my cup up to then let it overflow into someone else's and then they see that as a, oh, I don't have to live life this way begins to spark that interest or create that change. Or when we teach someone some different habits or things that they practice, they then might share that with someone else later on. And that's how we begin to get that started because I like to look at it also as we're peeling back layers of stuff. Like Raymond said, it goes back generations. Like we have these thoughts in our head. Like most of us live our lives based on what we think other people could be thinking about us. And those thoughts don't even exist. But it's just so many things that we have to do to get through that. And so I believe that by us focusing on being the change that we want to see and then start to implement these small things as we go on, as time progresses, we'll start to see those changes in that space created to where it's more accepted for black men to be more vulnerable, more open about their journey with their self. Yeah. I also want to add to that, too. I think what Nick and I are doing is contributing to that. Right. So you have mm -hmm. these people that you see that look like you that are doing it, that are, you know, leading by example, that in and of itself will prompt people to take accountability to go in and, you know, create that space for themselves. So I think that, you know, more people that are just pioneering in this space is going to be beneficial too um, for just more, right. you know, black men to explore what it may be like for them um, to take greater accountability for the quality of their mental and emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Wonderful. So I just want to express gratitude to both of you for being on the show, for talking with me and for all of the amazing, amazing work that you're doing in the world. Um, you have your Twitter, Twitter handles up um, on your name for people that are watching on YouTube, your social media handles. Um, but for those that are listening, how can they connect with you all and um, tap in with what it is you have going on? Yeah. yeah, so, so oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> yeah, so you, I, all of our social media is the same. It is balance, period. And if you, uh, for people that's listening, you'll see two lines that look like the yin yang sign. That's how you'll know it's us. And if you're watching us, you'll see these that you can see right here on our hats. That is all a plastered over all our merch and things like that. So anywhere that you see that, that's us, balance, period, on all from LinkedIn to Facebook to everything in between. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Well, go ahead, Ray. Did you? Have oh, something? and I was just going to say our website, too. <laughs> so uh, awesome. www.balanceperiod.com. Um, that'll give you access to everything from the resources that we the free resources that we offer um, to our store. There's a link there. There's also a link to our podcast on that site as well. Um, I would say if you're interested in learning more about how you can more mindfully manage your energy, which, you know, simplified is just you aligning. Um, your mindset, your motivation and your habits with your values or so the person you want to be and the goals. So the things that you want to see manifest themselves in your life. We created a free guide that gives you an exercise to help you do that. And so if you go to our website, um, balanceperiod.com, it'll be the first like link on there um, underneath the description at the top of our site. And it'll say download our free guide. Um, click that and you can you know, get access to this exercise that will help you start the process of beginning to incrementally improve your quality of life. Excellent. And I will be sure to include all of that in the show notes. But again, thank Perfect. you guys so, so much. Take care. And I hope to talk with y'all soon. Thank Definitely. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick and Ray, for the amazing work that you're doing. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you to each and every one of you for listening. I appreciate those listens. So um, be sure to like and subscribe, rate and review. Follow, connect with me on social at Ebony the Writer on my website, ebonychappelle.com. Uh, yeah, and take care of yourselves. As always, have a great, great time and a positive life, y'all. Peace.